Buddy, how's it going? Viper Futures here. Uh, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to pass a combine. I titled it as how to pass a combine, but really what it ends up being is how to trade efficiently, how to be profitable, you know, if not every day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, whatever your time frame is to cash out and pay some bills or do whatever you got to do, uh, be able to do that consistently and successfully without having your drawdown days get to you. So this is important for a lot of people that are uh, lack of capital that are using their strategies to pass or attempt to pass evaluations. Now I want to share some things with you guys today and a lot of it is, it was going to be at the end I'm going to share with you guys a strategy. A lot of you strategy hunters probably find this video and just want to get straight to the point. Hey get show me a strategy, show me a strategy, blah blah blah. I'm going to show you guys a strategy. I'm going to show you a strategy that I use. Um, of course, I tweak it myself every now and then based on volatility. I might tweak like just the data settings or, you know, you know, time frames, tick charts and stuff as I perfect it. Um, but I'm going to show what works uh, for me and then maybe it can help you. But mo most, mostly what you're going to be taking away from this video is the things that most people don't pay attention to, which is things about yourself and little tiny things that you can do. Uh, little tiny things that even some of you don't know that can help you. Uh, become a little bit more efficient and a little bit less stressful at the end of the day on what a crappy day you had trading and things like that and so this video may not be intended for all of you for if you're a professional out there already racking it in you're just trying to get a strategy hey you know what by all means fast forward a little bit to the end of here you'll catch you know what I'm doing if that's what you want but this is more for also folks that are or even veterans seasoned people or, or not that new people that are having some issues deep inside with your brain your neurological processes so, you know habits things like that same exact stuff that I have and same things that I fight same demons I work with and here to share that with you you know so I know it's been a little while since we made a published video guys you know, look we're not that consistent you know hell we're not after all selling anything I mean <laughs> I have nothing to sell in fact actually lately I do I have an algorithmic uh, strategy that I built for myself that I've been selling for very very cheap uh, you know and but other than that, we offer everything for free. You know, if you go to viperfutures.com, I don't charge for no course or, you know, anything like that. Um, in fact, you know, I just try to push everybody towards my YouTube channel. And I, I do this for, for fun. For, it's part of my passion for uh, for trading, you know. Uh, something I did for a long time in the spread trading commodity, which was in the futures market. It was just we were more swing trading. And now that I'm in the intraday um you know, department myself, you know, I just kind of share what I have for people. So that's the thing, you know, I just want to say we're not consistent for kind of a reason. Uh, you know, we're not really here trying to really sell anything, but we're here to spread the word and help people out when we can share a little bit of good knowledge. And if it, again, I always tell people if it helps one person, that's all I care about. You know, that just means a lot to us that one person gets a little cookie, a little piece of information from our videos and things like that. And that's why we do it. You know, um, I'm not here every day because I fight my own battles and things like that. But when we have good news to share with for you, um, you know, we want to make sure that we try to print these and send them out as soon as possible. Um, you know, I will show you again at the end of price action strategy, but let's get just like basic things. I mean, um, one one thing first and foremost for for the super super beginners out there, guys um, and gals. You know, I want to mention this. Um, <sighs> bear with me, experienced people. But like some of you experienced people don't even know this. I've I've had the chance to meet. I mean, not even dozens, like hundreds of traders, especially in the last year and a half. I had my own programs. I was in a lot of groups online. And I even got kicked out of some groups. I'm a regular human being. People piss me off. I just tell them what kind of jerk they are. And they, Facebook is just a just a, a sick uh, government, kind of, in a way. Uh, or that, and people are kind of, you know, <laughs> not going to get into that. Professional platform, you know, I can argue this with people with, I mean, you can, <laughs> there's traders out there that um, somehow just do good with crap platforms. I want to let you guys know, don't listen, do a little bit of diligence, dig in and find out what it is that you're trying to accomplish in your trading business and understand that also because you have a, not a big inventory of tools you need. Make sure you have a good professional platform. You will pay the price. Okay. Now this isn't this isn't something that mo most of you that are doing combines should be concerned because they provide you with the free professional platform. Most of them via rhythmic data are giving you like Ninja Trader. Look, guys, believe it or not, for day trading, I don't care what anybody on the internet says. For overall service, technology, the cost of margin. 
for day trading futures, NinjaTrader is a great platform. I have a good relationship with them. I've traded with a ton of other platforms. It's a professional platform that has tick data, and that's what you need. So you got to understand if you're not outside of the, if you're outside the evaluation world and you're trading on things like TradingView, which I just canceled my renewal. I've had it for a year. I tried to make it work. I thought they were cool. I thought they're you know, social platform and all these indicators that gave me ideas on, on stuff until I got sick of all 500 and plus something indicators and realized most of them are bunk and they're all telling you the same thing anyway, right? That if, if you're not going to have that kind of professional data, um, it's going to cost you money. It'll cost you money in the form of executions. Um, I mean, both getting in and out of trades, which that will cost you money. And it'll, it'll cost you money on lack of information because it can provide you with the wrong information for you to make a decision on taking the proper trade or not. I mean, have you ever compared a chart with another chart? And of course, they say, well, every platform is different. And yeah, it is. But try to compare professional, several professional platforms with some junk platforms. Um, you need things like tick historical tick data available on your platform if you don't have that you probably can't even run any kind of algos in the future if you want to get there but we're not talking about that that's a little bit too far advanced you can't run a lot of like the uh, proprietary professional software that's out there like the jigsaws and the book maps if you decide to get into order flow you're just not gonna be able to do it and if you get cheap because of commission or something like that it's gonna cost you trust me I've, I've seen it I've been through it I've seen people and they you know it, I'm pretty surprised at how even a lot of professionals I know out there well a handful don't know um, you know what this is historical tick data they say they don't trade off for ticks they trade for points which is funny okay anyway going on for the next point uh, so here here's the deal if you're gonna trade options you trade on a professional options account trading brokerage, whatever. If you're going to trade futures, you trade on a futures specific specialty platform. You want to trade options, you go to like TD Ameritrade or TradeStation. You want to trade stocks, you go to whatever, one of those. Uh, you don't go to like all in one, those all in one house uh, exclusive guys. It's, a lot of them aren't professional. You know, TD Ameritrade, great, good customer service. I trade options there, swing trade options to uh, my IRA there. Here's the deal. Um, they don't know much about futures, and neither do they give good deals. You got to have a ton of money. They don't give any margin breaks for day traders, things like that. So, again, <laughs> okay, you need to have a professional platform. I don't care you're doing an evaluation or you're trading for yourself. Um, two, I know this sounds kind of corny, but I'm going to show you an example. I'm showing up. Being consistent, okay? You gotta be consistent. You gotta come to work. You gotta show up. You're a day trader. You gotta come to work every day. And I don't care if you wanna, you know, be cute and say, well, I trade during Globex. You're going to work every day. You gotta trade. You gotta come to the table. You gotta come to work. That's what this is called. If you're a swing trader, you're a swing trader. You monitor your trades maybe 10, 15 minutes a day. We used to do that back when we were spread trading, which I'll explain why, how that kind of ended up being one of my weaknesses in day trading when it comes to stops. We'll talk about that. But you need to come to work. You need to show up. And, you know, um, look, I have multiple evaluation accounts. I just started a 75K one just yesterday, a fresh, clean slate one with Earnatrade. Trade. By the way, with Earn a Trade, you can have as many evaluations as you want. You can only get funded in one. So I screwed that one up. I'm starting a fresh one, and I have a couple other valuations that are funded elsewhere. Um, and if you ask me, I'm just going to say, no, they're not with our friends at Top Step. I like them a lot. I just, when I first started, didn't do really well there. As I honed my skill, I went to some of the easier passing evaluation companies, and I just, there I stuck. I just stayed, stuck around, because there's no reason to move around. I'm doing fine now. Also, in addition to our private funding and things like that. So, But you got to come into work. So this 75K account yesterday, guys, let me show you. Let me pull this account up. Now, this is exactly why I, you know, tell people, hey, guys, I'm not a guru. I'm just like you, too. I'm an organic manner, matter. I'm trying to trade, too. I'm trying to do this and that. I'm doing fine, but I still, every now and then, will take a dip into the dark side on my mind. I'll get up, come to the table not prepared or a little bit like trying to rush in because I'm running a little bit late like on a Monday trying to get out quickly because I want to go to the gym again because I've been doing that going back to martial arts like you know noon classes and 
you know, I'll mess up, I'll rush some things, and guess what? Then, you, has this ever happened to a lot of you guys? You end up not doing anything for the rest of the day, and you're stuck at your desk because you feel like you just screwed up. Trust me, don't act all like you guys ain't out there. You know, you don't have to raise your hands, raise your hand behind the internet. You don't have to, I don't have to, I'm not going to see it. My point is, is that it happens, and we, a lot of us do it. And, uh, it sucks to leave like that. So what I did was I took, I mean, I took three hit, three swing trades, I mean, swings, right off the bat at the open, like an idiot. I mean, hey, you know what? I did it. One of the number one things that I've been trying to work on is not blow up an account. Okay, take the whole daily loss if I have to so I could be able to come back the next day and work it back up. And here's a perfect example of like really like yesterday, 75K account, working it three big trades. I was trading off of like a, thir a 15 and a 30 minute chart only. It was a plan I had. Each loss was going to cost me about 500 bucks. My winners was going to make me about double. So I was playing ours. But you know, hey. I couldn't get anything right off the top like that. Every trade, and it was very, it was so fast that it sucked. I feel like my day was just over right away. One, I broke the rule. I shouldn't have been trading right at the open, even though there's some good stuff that happened sometime. The price action wasn't right, and we had a propulsion day. It was crazy, and then one would ask, well, why didn't you make any money yesterday? It was just straight up in the sky. Well, see, I'm not that kind of trader, you know, because, you know, then I'd be like chasing something and I had no pullbacks. Some people get lucky and they're good at just hitting the button, turn it on, go long, go short, everything's short that day, come back at the end of the day, turn it off, and, you know, that's fine. But how does that work for you 70, 80% of the time when the market doesn't do that? So to me, I look for consistent patterns and sometimes I battle it myself when things are a little inconsistent, like, Every 15 or 30 minute candle over candle opened up higher and higher. That happens like very rarely. In fact, in the last two years, it probably happened twice. You know, so I just couldn't get anything. So I got to like my full, full um, yesterday. I'll show you guys. I'm just going to show you on the Ninja Trader thing because it's cumulative. So I could just show it easier. Yesterday, I literally pulled up the full loss. And it was sad, you know. 1675 bucks you could lose only 1750 so I like almost maxed out this combine account okay and then today here's like the results today came to the table um, not even playing around and I'm going to show you guys this strategy and you know and it worked it, it, it formulated today and most of the time it does but I was in a hurry and I had to adjust some of my, my time bars to tick charts I'll show you guys 2700 bucks 17 trades, and I won all of them. A lot of them was just this was just question trading. There was no algo um, involved today. But you see, when you put a bad day and you come back, my point to the next day, and you show up to work, it we're still up oh, a grand after commissions for the week. Okay, so it, this is my one of my aggressive evaluations I'm running, and I do this on NQ. So. Um, I have other accounts, and this account is, is actually now just doing just fine. And so I proof something to myself, show up every day. Don't come in there worrying about what happened the day before. Even though I made it as tragic as possible, we came out of that. And now we can go back, mar markets start you know, getting back into their nice simple ranges with nice pullbacks. We can kill it. But one bad day of the week is not going to ruin my month or my week. I sure as hell am not going to let it keep costing me resets. Because you see, guys, these guys want that, yeah, some of you say, oh, they're only there for the money. Yeah, I mean, that's a business. Okay, but here's the deal. Don't think like that. Think like they are giving us this awesome opportunity, okay, to trade if you have insufficient capital, like myself, lack of capital to trade some of these highly leveraged products. These notional values on these markets are like over a quarter million dollar per contract, and we get the opportunity to trade it at a risk of like an evaluation. <laughs> But that doesn't mean you just keep, you know, blowing it up because in the back of your head, mentally, you know, well, it's only a hundred bucks on reset to find out. I mean, come on, you gotta learn, you gotta improve. I've been doing these things since about December last year. I decided to sign up, and it's really changed my intraday game. Again, um, you know, I, yeah. <laughs> so with that said, look at that example there. Two days of trading, uh, you know, NQ now are. You know, our accounts back up, um, you know, and we're not worried. We can just continue and move on. Okay, so uh, did anything change on the strategy? No, it was just me. 
okay and just coming in and just so that's why I want to speak about that you could pass actually any evaluation so we want to portion our days here's your deal okay what you need to do check this out okay if you come in and off one trade you can just do 400 bucks a day on NASDAQ okay and let's say your total you target you need to hit is 4300 bucks or something like that and you pass that's a total of 10 trading days you know they tell you you have a month to do it or whatever and you're gonna have probably some days you stay a little bit longer you probably do your thousand or like today I did a what was it 2400 bucks oh, hang on just today alone 2400 bucks 2700 so I mean you know you're gonna have also days like that I spent the whole day here yesterday I got to my max too fast and then I just had to, and I was still here all day I still came to work I was still drilling by the way <clears throat> and nothing was there to drill until like after 1 p.m. so if you have forty three hundred dollars to, to get even if you did 400 bucks a day and that's we're talking probably even that might be like one hour a day even though I still say try to be there all day that's 10 days you don't have to rush it a lot of us are coming in we're trying to do these home runs and this was one of my issues here this is one of my issues home run to try to get there quick what ends up happening you never get there you never get there and it takes you longer and then you have to go and do what you're wrecking and not go do which is go back to your jobs or things like that because you're rushing because you're trying to just hit these home runs and some I see a lot of you guys doing that out there on these groups hitting home runs oh yeah man look at me but it's like you know could you do that in little pieces? You know, this 2700 bucks was done over 17 trades. You know, the average trade was about $159. Highest winner was about 300 and stuff like that. We discretion traded today. We had levels to hit, but then we also knew when th things were getting a little slow, we fired that trade. You know, and it didn't matter. I don't care what anybody says. Discretion trading. And you start, you know. So, um... We did those in little pieces because, of course, you can't come and hit a grand slam when you have uh, combines and stuff that I want you to do um, consistency rules and things like that. We do have consistency rules in all the other evaluations, okay, which is not bad, 30% of your total. Um, you know, what, in, what inspired me to make this video today, you know, I spoke to another trader today. And from a whole different side of the world um, and literally just felt like I was it was me talking to me and so I can and different kind of shoes different kind of professions different kind of education level but as a trader you you run into this a lot that you feel that the, the person is if they're really upfront and honest just like as I was I was very upfront and honest I can't say what I was talking about because um, you know for it's a you know not fair for the privacy so but you know you just literally felt like I was talking to myself the person was talking to me and, and the things I was saying back and forth like we we're probably you know thinking that wow there's others like me out there and so it inspired me because um, um, to, to, to talk a little bit today okay and I think that it, it's really about us and how simple we can keep it or how non-fear we can use how uh, not greedy we can be or whatever it is there's something in our head that usually is fear involved and it could be lack of strategy lack of you know uh, whatever and we'll make an excuse a logical excuse on it but the reality is there's a fear driven thing in there in our in our minds so so we got to um, and plus look Here's another thing that speaking with that other person today, let me put on a chart so it looks more pretty green. Um, is, you know, you got to have a quality of life. This thing could become gambling real quick. You know, somebody told me the other day, oh, this is just gambling anyway. I said, if this is gambling, then I'm playing Texas Hold'em. You can be the gambler. I'm using an edge. I know what I'm dealing with every time I'm like uh, about to execute a trade, and that is frankly it. I'm not waiting for you know a result like rolling a dice result. It doesn't work that way. Most of the time, I know what I'm dealing with before I get in. Um, you're the one that can probably be the gambler, but I'm not. No thanks. So, um, with that said, though, gambling and all that stuff. 
when it comes to uh, the word addictions, um, you know, we want to make sure it doesn't become an addiction in a bad way. Hell, if you're here all day, but you're killing it, good. But if you're here all day or you're not learning something, you're addicted. And you need to do it in portion at times, like I said, you know, like make a little bit a day and move on because you need the quality of life back. You need to be going back to the gym. You need to be getting physically active. You need to go out, whatever it is you like to do, whether it's sailing, go to the beach, shoot guns. I don't care. Play volleyball, play soccer, hang out with the kids, go walk dogs, go do Uber part-time. I don't know what it is, but do it and go do it. Go do your jiu-jitsu classes again. Like me, I'm got yeah, two times a week. I was trying to do five days a week. This trading is still pulling the best of me, and I'm only able to do two. So, um, you know, you got to you gotta remember that, you know, where's the quality of life? So, unless you're making a ton of money here and you have a different kind of goal, that's fine. I could respect that. Hey, you're here killing two grand a day, three grand. Hey, man, salute you. I salute you. All right. Um, another thing, you know, stops. A lot of people, this was my pro big problem, I'll, I told you guys this was my second problem because I used to swing trade spreads and that was a very mean reverting market, okay, mean reversion means it really, it would deviate one or two, three standard deviation a lot of the time and then come back in, I had time on my hands, I had a different business I was running, I had more capital I was trading, I didn't care, I, I didn't care, I had big allowables of being in the red. And so I didn't run, I didn't have stops and spreads. You hardly ever really do. You have mental stops. And kind of like how I do my, my uh, equity options. But point is, is that created a bad habit of not being able to use them here. You got to loyally, 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 loyally use your damn stops, okay? Now, I'm not here to try to tell you how many stops you need to have. Some people put three tick, two tick behind a something, something. Maybe that's why you get stopped a lot. Some people put, uh, you know, what depends what it is, you know. Um, but it's not definitely personal. When they come up here and they tag all these stops from a, this is this white line here is the session open. It's just probably one. The thing has so much momentum going up here, it took a while to put breaks on. People here were probably breakout trading. So then they had to put a break on them, stop them out. So it's not just about you, John, or you, Carl, or you, Sue. It's about Peter, John, Carl, Sue, blah, 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 William, Tom. They went after all of our dad damn money. <laughs> they weren't just after you, and it's not personal, but they went after all of us. So, yeah, you know, hey, they stopped running our ass. But then here's the other thing. Then can, they, then can you get back in? A lot of us, I think, are having issues in moving stops because we want to win. There's a winning mentality in neurological things uh, that I've been learning about. We don't like to lose. It's a big time American thing, by the way. Uh, no hating. I was born and raised in America. I'm a patriot, but you know, I hear this. That's why you see a lot of foreigners passing evaluations. They have different settings and values of the dollars and money, and it's sports. You know, we we're like very sport minded. We want to win. We take a trade, and we're like rooting for the damn trade, like as if it's like a like like L.A. Dodgers. It's not. It's a damn trade. It's there to make you money or it's there to destroy you. You fire that son of a gun. So you leave those stops right there and it'll and trust me, then you can take a lot more trades in a day. You have no excuse. You can take you know, especially in Nasdaq, you can take 10, 20, 30 trades a day. And it has a lot of length in them to make you money. Okay? We're gonna get into uh um you know, um, the strategy here that you guys need to hear, this is going to be a little bit long video. Shoot, 23 minutes already. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and get into that. Um, here's an idea I'm going to give you guys for NQ. When we talk about tick charts, yep, you're not going to get it on cheap trading view stuff like that. You're going to get this on good platforms, professional platforms. Okay? So we need to draw some support resistance on one chart i'm going to keep a chart kind of bare bone and on another chart i'm going to have profiles and some moving averages it's going to be my higher tick time frame it's going to be my higher tick time frame and i'm going to have a lower tick time frame i'm going to take trades off of and that's it we're going to get into that right now so the first thing i'm going to have you guys do is go to like a four hour time frame let's go to nasdaq i'm going to go to the indicators that are all over here right now and i'm going to go ahead and just un make them invisible invisible and voila it's a four hour time frame 
my frame that I'm recording on is probably not grabbing the whole thing. Hang on. All right, now on this four-hour time frame, we're still going to trade off the 900 tick charts on NQ. You know, sometimes you can get in, get into it if you want to reduce your uh, risk reward. Go down to a 400. You will start with a 900. Your anchor is going to be a 4,000. Okay. So we're going to have two charts. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to try to set this up as soon as possible, and then we can go from there. We'll do this for NQ today. I'll come in and try to do this on ES the next day. NQ, go ahead a four hour. After that, I want you to pull up a line chart. Turn it into a line on close bar. That's it. Well, I used to do this old school. I got this from an old Forex guy. Forgot his name. He disappeared. I can't remember it. So credit goes to the, that guy. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm using my hotkeys to draw some lines. At these points, at all the swing highs and lows, for precision reasons, we're using line on close. And I know this is going to look a little bit messy. I want all the swing highs. You could be approximate in all the swing lows. I just want to draw manually support resistance signs. Now, you may not really need this for like a whole, you know, month, whatever. Just, you know, some people, they'll just come in here and redo this for like a week worth. And this is the best way that I'm going to be getting my points. Because look how it's just easy. I can see my swings, you know. And what ends up happening when I do this is what I'm grabbing, and you'll see some some will reiterate other places and repeat themselves. That means that's a good area. When I turn it into a candlestick chart, you'll see how it avoids the wicks because the wicks is where there was a lot of noise. And you see that? Do you see how there was just like a lot of noise on some of the wicks? Some of the wicks were very strong, and they were the tips of, of points, but they really weren't. The points are the bodies, and that's where price really did... Uh, transact as far as an open kind of a close situation so there was a lot more uh there right and so that's what we have now okay now that we have that i want to go to turn it into a 900 tick candlestick okay and i'm just going to keep this here and this is going to be like levels okay so now what's another important levels i want you to add i want you to add the prior day close uh, I'm sorry, the prior day high, low, the close. I don't care the prior day's open. I just want the prior day's low, the high of the prior day, and the close. The close is important because it's called the settle. Some people say the settled price, where it's settled, where it closed, or whatever. It's relative. Okay. And then I also want you to add the current day's open. Current day open. Now, some people like to use this by session opens. We're just going to keep it simple. Our current day open, which is from our Globex time, from our 23-hour session, right? From Central Time 1500 through our 1415 or 1315 close. And I'm going to make that visible now. And these are going to be different levels. Now, there is another set of levels that some pros like to do, if you'd like to do an ad, which is the um, overnight high and low. Okay, And that's a pretty viable area, too. But now look how, like you see here, you see this white line. That's the session open from 1500 Central, how it became pretty reliable as a spot most of the day, along with this low swing that was somewhere out here, somewhere way far out there. But we already picked that, right, because we were on a four-hour line on close chart. Now we have some pretty clean levels. And you can redo that like every day because it takes you nothing to come in and prep like that. Okay, but now you have the best possible levels. Okay, that you can trade off of. Now, this doesn't mean you could just make the decision off here now if you want. Okay, I'm also a trend trader and I love EMAs and I like profile research. Okay, so I do have another higher time frame with the tick chart. Cool thing on Ninja Trader is all of my lines are going to reflect on that same market on any time frame. You can set them up that way, it doesn't come that way default. You got to do that. And then I have on my weekly charts, I have basically daily profiles, daily session profiles, along with, uh, if I had it all loaded up here, the whole week as a composite. But I really just want to break down the day here to not get all, make it look messy and overwhelming. You're going to add on this one a 20 EMA, an 89 EMA, a daily VWAP, and a weekly VWAP. Now look at the interesting thing that happened here today. First of all, like I mentioned yesterday, right, we're sky high in the air session right before as it opens. Let me add more days here. Ten. Just get this out, okay? We're sky high on this session. 
There was no pullbacks. Right? It was just like there was no pullback. There was a, as you see, we hit the prior day high. There was a stall there, broke out, continued, came down here. Then at, at like around, like I said, at noon, it bounced off. There was one good really trade right here off the 20 EMA with a 4,000 tick. Very nice and simple. And that was 890. By then I was gone. I destroyed myself over here. And I destroyed myself on a different market. So, uh, no, I'm sorry. It was here on NASDAQ. Um, in this little area was like my last spot. Tried to fade that down was my last pot. I couldn't afford any more trades. So, so that's why I couldn't do this one. So sometimes, so I said, oh, patience is going to be my last thing I'm going to leave you guys with. God darn the value of patience, man. Oh my God. <clears throat> so a lot of you guys that are familiar with VWAP intraday traders, stock traders and futures traders, you're, you're used to VWAP. I learned from a hedge fund guy that's a friend of mine. He trades a $5 million hedge fund um, out in the east. And he said, Peter, the day that you start incorporating weekly values, you will really, really have a different edge over everybody else. So I'd like to share that with you guys. The weekly VWAP is the bottom here. Not only did price keep bouncing up and down from the weekly VWAP today, but we also had... A, a support line there a very strong one and buyers really made an effort yesterday to make sure they got this thing up so they were going to come in and support this area and so today you could have been reverting i wouldn't have because to me overall still the trend was short even though a lot of people can argue and say that most of today was a chop big uh, wide chop day i would uh, disagree in a way because we had a big shorts here bouncing off the 20 we have the VWAP, the 89, and then later on again, VWAP almost is becoming uh, resistance, the daily VWAP. And the weekly VWAP is becoming support, although we have other elements there. So we had like really simple trades, like trades today to not be too afraid of at all. And plus, this was the 4,000 tick chart. So this is what I'm measuring my moves off of, and then I'm coming in, and I can take them on a 900 tick. Now look at how reliable most, I mean, yeah, you're going to get a little chopped here and there. You're going to get a little bit of, you know, whatever your risk is, 125 bucks. I see a lot of you guys risking 125 bucks per NASDAQ trade out there, what, 30 ticks or whatever. You know, you're going to get chopped out of some, but you can come back in them and, you know, your risk reward is almost three to one on these, on this kind of expansion. So, you know, even if it did go a little bit sideways in the, the day, I love them because they're just so wide and nice. They're juicy. They pay good. And, but still, really overall, trend was down. Uh, but it was very lightly down, which is another thing I want to bring up, guys, that are intraday trading. Um, I'm going to delete all of these lines that we just made. And here's a daily chart of NASDAQ with just two moving averages on there. Okay. I want you guys to be very careful and cautious of trying to pick your day by looking at a high time frame like that intraday. It'll set your mind on a bias. I'm just telling you because I've done it, it'll set your mind up for a certain bias that day, and it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what's going to happen, okay? We had a very small little indecision day here today. Could have been long, could have been super short and sold off, could have been super long because it's broken out of this EMA, broken off the top of this prior day's candle that was a really big day yesterday. So, you know, what's the expectation anyway after a big sell-off or a big long day yeah people say that the next day will do nothing but we see numerous times that that does not valid either you just got to take what you have that day uh, what's given to you on those time frames i showed you because what's the deal with this is you're going to have a bias this is something i was doing myself you're going to have a bias you're going to start making this bias and you're going to stick with that damn bias and you might forget to come back here anyway either, you know there's this day charts are just too big for you to have a bias during the daytime you know, you're either a day trader or a swing trader. You know, if you're sitting here swing trading, buying an option here at the bottom or selling, put, buying a put here or calls down here or swing trading because you got mega money from, from ages ago and then what are you doing? You're just buying these little dips, buying here, buying here, buying here, you know, maybe selling a little. I mean, you know, this is a wash. It washed out all these swing traders. This is another thing I kind of don't like about swing trading. You know, just washed out everybody who's probably been collecting from here that are just bag holders. So if you're not smart at that either, don't think it's easy to do that. 
Okay, so same concept, but now you got to manage this if you're a swing trader. But don't try to get too much bias on this chart, trying to be trading what's going on here in the trenches. Okay, you're in the trenches. You're not trade. You can't trade from the sky, from NASA, Google satellite, or whatever, and then trade on the ground too. You got to pick pick one. <coughs> Excuse me. Obviously, if you're in an evaluation, you got to get really good at getting some money here in the trenches. You got to fight the front lines, and there's a lot of people that do it, and a lot of people ain't gonna come out here and just hand it to you and all that crap. Okay, you gotta just find something that works for you eventually, and maybe I help you. Somebody helped you along the line as the years go by, and you become a thick-skinned seasoned trader, and then uh, you realize, damn. Oh, I went in a whole circle and learned everything just to see how easy it really actually is. Yes, that's just the reality. When that light bulb goes off, you'll be damn glad it did. And you'll know when it did. But that's the thing. And this is just how you trade it. So, you know, you can't trade blind. A lot of people just say like this. Oh, I just trade like this. I, I think personally a lot of people use a lot of things. They just try to act like they don't. That they do. I've caught people doing it. You know, trust me. They want to make things look clean. Everyone uses something to have a bias or their places. So you got to do that. This is what I do. Okay. And trust me, you know, you would have been a, you know, a happy camper like me today. And so, but back to the uh, rules. You got to do these things I talk about. You got to stick to these things. Okay. You got to come to work. You got to make sure you always keep a professional platform, keep a professional clean, refresh your, uh, clean your area every day, your desk, refresh yourself, come to work, show up, be consistent, portion your days out. Some of the most consistent, most secret, secret, uh, strategies of all time of all pros is just to be partial, partial profits every day, not home runs, little base hits, base hits. People say this all the time. You guys hear these words. You hear this terminology, don't chase, you know, or, uh, you know, just a quick fix. People, oh, you looking for a quick fix? No. To, to find quick fix, you know, to me, 400, 500,000 a day in the futures markets, it's fair. That's little base hits still, <laughs> okay? Those are little base hits, you know what I mean? But people are coming wanting to do 5K a day. It's just, you know, you're going to force it and it ain't going to happen, you know? And so this is how you use these kind of formulas. Oh, and in the whole thing, be patient and have fun with the journey. Trust me, guys. I've seen a lot of people, also including myself, where things start becoming very normalized. They kind of crystallize and just become, you know, all whatever. They're caramelized. And they start getting boring. Next thing you know, you start like not wanting to come to damn work. Because it's like, that's when you know things are improving for you. But when they get boring, be careful. It's in light of probably being more consistent. But then that takes away from coming to work on time. <laughs> so, be patient. Have fun with it. Have fun with the journey. The journey is like one of the best parts um, because uh, later on, then you'll have the opportunity to be able to laugh at the crap you went through. And I'm talking about some bad crap. I mean, look, um, BKs and, and suicide attempts and a lot of this stuff is not uncommon in this industry. Um, I can speak from my own experiences and, you know, and things like that. So, um I can tell you right now, people think later on they see the black belt and they give no credit to the black belt, but, the, you know, a black belt is just a white belt who never gave up, okay? A black belt, they say this in jiu-jitsu, is just a white belt who never gave up. Even they say in martial arts, black belt is the beginning, is the beginning of the journey. That's where new journeys begin. It never stops, and that's the same thing as a trader. You know, things are going to change. Things adapt. You still keep basic principles. Oh, I haven't changed anything in zillions of years, people say. It's probably true as a structure. But things still do change, and you're doing little adaptations. And that's, is, you know, um, but it gets easy after a while. So, just all got to stick together. Be patient. You know, stay away from bad groups. Don't listen to nonsense. Don't be sold to 
fake BS marketers out there. Um, trust me, you don't need it. And uh, and that's about it, guys. So hopefully this 40-minute video helped you guys, helped somebody out there. Sorry it took so long to explain to you what it's going to take for you to really be consistent and pass one of these evaluations and things like that. Almost guaranteed, you know. I'm going to just say guaranteed. <laughs> I mean, just don't take it. Wait for the markets to saddle. Get an equilibrium. And, you know, you can capitalize on certain days. And you know what? Hey, look, to each his own. You might argue that too and just say, hey, one, two days out the week is all I need. But here's the deal. Not coming to the table every day, you're not going to know if you miss that day that makes up for the crap day. Okay? Something that works against your, your neurological processes. Something that a day that, like, a, you can't handle, like, a, a rocket of a day because it's just no pullbacks. You can't. You got to be around the next day, you know, because... If you put if you put a thumb on that day and say I'm only going to be here on Mondays and that Monday was a day like this, right here, like this crap. For a lot of people, it was crap. Trust me. For all like the like a lot of like rookies and whatever like gamblers, they just straight shot long to walk away, go take a crap, go get some coffee, come back. I don't trade like that. I need to be there at my trades. So if you um. Hell, if that worked for you. Now, you could have done like a one-minute chart, by the way. I'm just not a one-minute chart kind of guy. Uh, one-minute chart, you could have probably got a lot of pullbacks on this. So, there probably would have worked for you there. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say that is if that day doesn't work for you and you handle better on ranges, small downtrend but more range, then you got to come back around the next day. You can't just... Oh, I had a crappy Monday. I'm out of here. How about Thursday? You had a nice day. Look at that. Sell, sell, sell on the 20, sell on the 20. It doesn't work. Sell on the 89. If that didn't work, sell on the view app. Okay. That's a lot of money. And that was a Friday. Here. Thursday was the same. It irritated me a bit, actually. Because I was on only on 15 and 30 minute charts. It irritated me. New candle over new candle. I just couldn't get a pullback. Here's Wednesday of last week. We got to figure it out. Here's the overnight of Wednesday. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, here's a nice range day. You know, it's just, they're all nice days. <laughs> okay. Hope this helped. You guys will pass. You guys will accomplish your goal. You guys will get to that freedom that you want. You need to put a, a you know, have like a, 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 a a soul search with yourself and ask yourself what is your priority 400 500 bucks a day is better than most jobs out there get that be happy with four or five hundred bucks a day start making withdrawals take some of the 80 percent evaluation out put 20 percent or something away for taxes more or less you'll have different write-offs so just you know i'm not a cpa but 20 put that away and then you know cash out in the month Get yourself a paycheck. Feel that first. Then go for more money. You know what I mean? That's, you know, for other countries, guys. My wife says, I'll leave it with this. We'll end up making this like a one-hour video coaching class, whatever we'll call it. Listen, my wife says, she says, you know, we want to move, you know, build a house in her country, by the way. She's from East Europe. You know, we have some land there in a really nice area with the families there all nearby. And uh, we're going to build a contemporary home. We have a nice home in Austin, Texas, too. But you know what? Um, we just have a home there. And she said, you know, the cost of living is going to be good, too. And so I said, well, we were there. I said, everything kind of seems just as expensive as the United States. The building, the home, the grocery stores. She said, but you still don't understand. Still, the income level there, the overall cost of life is just cheaper somehow. You know, so I have family there that's like professionals, you know, blue collar, medical professionals combined. Some of them aren't making what we make here at trading. And the thing is, is I think what happens is we get a little bit too greedy and we want a lot because we see a little bit of too much, especially progressive countries like United States. You know, everyone wants to make like that crazy ass money that they see. And the thing is, is a lot of countries, there's people that are successfully doing this. Some people are doing a hundred bucks a day. They're happy. They're living good. They might be in Bangkok somewhere, 
but they are happy with the 100 bucks a day over there. That's a lot of money. Have you seen what kind of homes you can rent? What kind of, I'm talking luxury, you can rent all inclusive with valet, massage, and everything for like probably 1500 bucks a month over there? I mean, so just want to share that, that understand the value of money. I know in this last year or two, we've had some weird, nasty events in life, and people kind of got a little out of place on life, forgot where your values are, forgot where the value of the damn stupid dollar is. It don't matter any of that crap. Just trade, get your damn money, start cashing out so you can feel and smell and taste the value of it, and then start going for, you know, more. You know, if you do a little bit consistently, you can do a lot more consistently, and so... That's about it. Viper Futures out. It's been a while. Sorry for that one hour session, guys. You know what, though? I hope it helps somebody. It has to. It has to. I would have been thankful like this back in my times. People would say things like this. Trust me. It's all you need to hear. It's all you need to hear. It's all you need to have. None of this, well, come over here for, you know, $29,995. You know, I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to tell you the same things, but in a nice, you know, portfolio series. I'm going to make you log in and make you feel like you're in school. Hell no. Nah. This is how it is. Okay? Coming from a true trader. Viper Futures. Out.